Hey, this is Meredith Elliott Powell, and you know what time it is. Well, I'm a few minutes late because I'm running behind. It's my fault, but it is basically 8.01 Saturday morning, time for a Sales Logic. Hanging out here with my partner, Mark Hunter. Mark, how are you doing this week? I'm doing great. Hey, we're going to be talking about your attitude, confidence, and how that all fits into the sales process. So we're not going to let one minute late affect your attitude, are we? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. It's all in how you look at it, right? You got it. All right, let's rock and roll. All right. Once again, it is 8 a.m. Saturday morning, time for Sales Logic. Now, before Mark tells you more about what we have on tap for today, I always like to start by telling you how the show works because we want you, the audience, to get active, engaged, and involved. This show is really about you. So if you have a question, just send it to Mark, send it to me, or go to saleslogicpodcast.com. We'll feature you right here on this show. We cover a hot topic, recommend a book, and because we want you to get return on investment, we leave you with a lightning round. So Mark, how does today look? Well, today looks great. And I love the topic that we're going to be talking about. The topic is what role does attitude, confidence, and kindness have in the sales process? Okay. that That's a, that's a head spinner for some people. But <laughs> Let's start off first with the question. The question comes from Mary. She says, I'm a real estate agent, and right now, interest rates are killing my team. We've gone from the best year on record to looking at a tough go until interest rates settle and start to come down. How do I keep my team motivated, engaged, and believing they can continue to be successful? Yeah, what a what a great question, right? And you know, not only the real estate industry, but a lot of industries. I just uh, spoke for an insurance um, organization this week, and they are calling this a hard market. Talk about um, a negative um, <laughs> image in your mind. So, number one, this may seem a little bit odd uh, in in answer to your question, but I don't think you should ignore your team's. Feelings. I think like just trying to pretend that everything's okay is not a good idea. I mean, we can't move past feelings till we actually feel those feelings. So something that I used to do with my team back when interest rates would go up and I was in the banking um, industry is that we used to spend, we used to put a timer on it. You get 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to complain about every reason that what's happening to you just it doesn't feel good. And then once that timer goes off, then you have to switch it to what are the solutions? What are the things that we can do to move past the challenges in the marketplace? I love that picture you painted because I, I, I use a similar way. It's, it's okay. We're going to take the box off the shelf and we're going to stuff all of our ant in that box. And mm -hmm. you've got X amount of time to do it. And then you're going to put it on the shelf. And then you're going to take down another box. And that's the box that you're going to put your solutions in. That's the yeah. box that you're going to take. This is what we are going to do. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing. When you compartmentalize, you think about sports teams, you know, they lose a game. You get 24 hours to dwell on that loss. And then boom, you move on. You have to move past it. So Mary, I'm going to tell you something. Let, let your sales team vent. And here's the whole thing. There's still a lot of good stuff happening out there. You got to encourage every one of your people to find what is that one element of success that they had yesterday. Get them to share that. Start the day off by saying, hey, everybody, here, what's one thing that went really well yesterday? And, and celebrate that and use that as leverage to, in turn, have something good happen again today. Yeah, it's so important, though, to give them the time to vent. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, Far too often, if you don't acknowledge your feelings, you can't move past those feelings. Like that little voice will be down there. So that's probably the biggest challenge that I see leaders make is they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the reasons that you can't be successful. They don't want to hear the reasons that it's hard when interest rates are hard. And I get that. But once you acknowledge them, put a timer on it, people feel heard. And once they get it out, it frees up the capacity they need to start to innovate and um, and create, which is what they need, innovation and creativity to get past some of those challenging times. 
And that's so true because when you do that, you're demonstrating empathy to your team. You're, you're, you're understanding that you're listening to them. But hey, here's the whole thing. You as a leader and, and solo, we have a lot of solo salespeople watching, listening to the show. You can't allow yourself to become overwhelmed by that. You have to always keep, this is, you know, I, I'm viewed as the optimist because I, I can't live in any other world. Now, how do you do that? It's finding those little pieces of success. You know what, you know what I find very interesting? The valleys are never as deep as we think they are. And the mountaintops are never as high as we think they are. When we're in the valley, we think, oh, the sun is never going to come up again. But you know what? It's amazing how it changes. The key is keep momentum. Do not ever let momentum stop. Because as soon as you stop, you're going to freeze. And then it's all over. Yeah. And I don't know the age of your team, but there's, um, you know, if you have anybody who's been in this for 20, 25 years, you know, when I, I was speaking to a group of financial service professionals um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, there was a banker in there like me who we started loaning money at 17%. And, um, and I remember dancing a jig when it fell to nine. I mean, we thought when it fell under 10, we thought, oh my God, we are going to make so much money. It's crazy. So, hearing the stories from people who have been there before, who have kind of been in the winter and can tell you that spring is coming. And, and there's a lot of wisdom to be gained from that experience. You know, um, when, when I spoke to the insurance group on Tuesday, the, the leader had everybody raise their hands who was under the age of 45. And it was over half the room. And if you're under the age of 45, you've probably never seen really high interest rates. You've never seen um, inflation, because the economy has been really good for a long time. And that really, really struck me. So when I hit the stage, I was interested in anybody over the age of 55 and just joking and laughing about the times that we had seen and the fact that you'll come through them. So there's a lot to be, there's so much power in history and seeing the people have come through bigger challenges than you have. It's not only enlightening, it's motivating. Yeah. And it's not just interest rates. It's the whole state of the economy. And of course, interest rates drive the economy. And you know, what's interesting is the last time the economy had a little struggle, we can use that R word. I don't like to use it was 08, 09. Right. And that means that means today who people who are under the age of 30, 32, 33, they've never experienced it. Right. They have never experienced it. And I do a lot of work in the tech space and speak to a lot of tech groups. And they're like, totally, oh, they can't, they can't believe this. But here's the whole thing. Attitude, confidence is absolutely the driver of your sales success. This is why I say you, the attitude you have going into a sale predetermines the results you get coming out. So I'll tell you what, if you don't fix your attitude, you won't fix your sales. Yeah. And I think one of the greatest and probably easiest ways to, um, to fix your attitude is, um, is to think about the talk that you give yourself. This happened to me just the other day. And listen, this is something you constantly need to do. But I was flying from um, uh, Atlanta, Georgia to Little Rock, um, Arkansas. And, um, and I got to the airport, my flight, in fact, I almost took a picture of the screen. I was just about to take it to send to my mastermind buddies. It said flight leaving early, right? And in the moment I went to go get my phone, it said flight delayed to 1230 PM. I was supposed to take off at 11, um, quarter till 11. Now it's delayed to 1230 PM. I looked at the people next to me and I was like, did that just change? Did we just see that? Well, what happened was we had a plane, we had a crew, we had two pilots, but apparently they decided there was a flight that was more important than our flight. So they took our pilots off our plane. And when that happens, they have, they have to contact pilots. Those pilots have an hour to respond, and then they have another hour to get there. So we were looking now at 1.30 a.m. at best. Long story short, flight didn't take off until, um, until 2 a.m. Uh, Eastern. I had an 8 o'clock keynote. I was not happy. I was, I mean, the talk going through my head was, why do I do this? It isn't worth it. This is going to suck. I'm going to be exhausted. Here goes the rest of my week. I caught myself in the middle of it and it was like, okay, let's take a breath and just change the words going in your head. Like 
maybe this will be okay. I could get there by 3 a.m. I could go to sleep. I could get maybe four hours of sleep. All I have to do is get up and do a keynote. I just need energy for an hour and I can, I can chill out. And I thought, what would make me happy in the moment? So I made a deal with myself. If I wrote one blog and made three sales calls, I could watch crap television. My point is I worked on the talk going in my head to start to shift my attitude. That is so key because again, it's your attitude going in and, and you could have carried that negative attitude over from the flight to the keynote. But think about it, the audience doesn't care. The no. audience doesn't care. This is the whole thing. We in sales have to remember that when we're in front of a customer, that is the most important thing. We've got some great comments coming in from some of our mas mastermind members. And it is so spot on. Hugh wrote that, you know, write out the positive. It is so key. There's yeah. something um, therapeutic about writing out the positive. This is, you know, Zig Ziglar used to have this approach. And 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 I, I, I every morning I start, to, what are the five things I'm thankful for? What are the five things? I'm guilty of not always writing them down, and I probably should. But you, when you dwell on the positive, it's amazing how you find other <laughs> positive things. But if you had chosen to dwell on that flight and 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 all of the issues, and didn't they realize that you're on that flight? So it's the most important flight to you. But right. There's, but there's nothing. See, this whole thing. So many times we can't control interest rates. We allow negativity to come into our lives because we're allowing things that we can't control to impact our lives. Wrong. Wrong. I can't control interest rates. So I need to find my solution. <laughs> my solution starts with my attitude by finding the positive, whatever. It might be a very small little piece, but I'm going to find the positive. Mary, your agents, they may have had one phone call that just went positive. So he says, yeah, I think maybe probably in the next year or two, we're going to look at selling, you know, our house. Great, great. That may be the most... The most enlightening, positive thing happened all day. That's okay. Dwell on it. It's amazing when you're positive. It's amazing how many more positive things. Lucky people are not lucky. Yeah, you know, I agree with that. Right? How, how, how many? Oh, they're just so lucky. No, 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 no. It, it, it's because they put themselves in a position. And it starts by having a positive mindset. Yeah, I love what Natalie says here. Another member of our mastermind group, start with a smile, it's infectious. Natalie, that reminds me of something that um, that Tony Robbins says. So you say, I mean, if you smile right now, you can't be angry. And, um, and Tony Robbins says that there's two emotions that are going to ruin your success. And those emotions are fear and those emotions um, are, are anger. And the way to move past fear is to take action. But being the best, you can't really squish fear and it's okay to be afraid. But if you take action, you'll start to squish it. And he says the way to get past anger is to be grateful. Because if you're writing down, like Mark said, the things that you're grateful for, anger will dissipate. And the more that you can control that anger and fear, which is, you know, which I think probably is what's happening with your team with real estate right now, is, um, you know, nobody's nobody thinks, wow, we're so lucky when the economy is in your favor. The moment that the economy goes bad, you think it's unfair where all it is is a natural wave. It is a natural wave that happens. It is. And, and, and again, we just have to be able to just ride the wave, ride through it. And what I find so amazing is how people allow those outside factors to influence them. And great people don't allow that to happen. Now, it also is because they have a very set routine. One of the ways that I continue to motivate myself, keep my attitude, keep my confidence high, is you have a very set routine. And I know you have a very set routine. And it's amazing because when you're in your routine, it's amazing how those outside factors don't influence you as much. It's when you're sitting there with nothing to do. You could have chosen to get on that plane in Atlanta, fly to Little Rock, and not do anything, right? And what would you have done? You would have commiserated in the issue and the problem you felt you were going to have the next morning. But instead, no, you said, I'm going to get this work done. I, I'm, I'm going to get this stuff done. You stay in the game. This is where it's so key. Motivation, movement overcomes so many factors. Yeah. I, I really believe that movement um, is the, is the cure to, to many things. I, I did a video 
just uh, just last week, right when I was getting ready to do a keynote, I got a message that I'd lost a keynote that I really thought I was landing. I mean, I'd almost counted it as a closed deal. I thought we were that close mm -hmm. and um, and I lost it. And I had about 45 minutes before I was about to go on stage. And I thought, what do you do when you lose a deal? What do you do when you lose a deal? You get on the phone and you make more calls. The fastest way to get over the fact that I lost a keynote was to get on the phone and try to find another one. And you know, the craziest thing, that was the day I was in Kansas City, um, Mark, is by the time I got to the Kansas City airport, it was for a December 6th keynote. I lost it. By the time I got to the Kansas City airport, I had a bureau reach out to me looking to see if I had December 6th open. I mean, the energy you put out into the universe is definitely the energy you are going to get back. I, that is so key. This is why I say you don't slide into the weekend. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everybody here. This is why Friday afternoons is a selling period. You can't allow yourself, for instance, you were flying to the air, you were heading to the airport, you know, Kansas City on a Friday afternoon. You were making sales calls because here's the whole thing. If, if I allow myself to slide into the weekend, it's amazing. You know what happens? I just commiserate all weekend. Mm -hmm. I have to make my start of the week and my end of the week be extremely positive. And I do that by being very aggressive with sales calls, by making things happen. When you choose to use your time, it is amazing at what happens. Hey, I want to jump on this whole kindness thing because we have kindness in the title. Yeah. And I got to convey a story. I can't say the gentleman's name, but he was CEO of a Fortune 5, back, actually CEO of probably a Fortune 100 company. And he had taken over this company and was known as a very kind person. I spent a couple of days with him and his team and, and it was very interesting, but he, the gentleman was extremely, extremely nice. I asked him, I said, your team is, it, it, is, it is getting used to you, but they find you to be extremely nice, extremely cordial, extre extremely kind. He says, why is that? And he shared with me, he says, I make better decisions. I make better decisions when I'm kind to other people. Stop and think about that for a moment. What is he, what was he saying? He says, because he's in a different mindset. He's in a different frame of mind. And he was CEO of that company for about 10 years. And they went through some major, major issues. He was also on the board of directors of several other Fortune 500 companies. They went through major issues. And it was always interesting to follow his career and, and to follow his decision. He never got thrown under the bus. He could his, his board could have fired him on several occasions. But no, no, they didn't because he was able to navigate the organization through all of these challenges. And it was because he had the right mindset. He had the right frame. I love that. You know, I do too. I think that, I think that kindness is, is really um, underrated, but I want to say the first person you need to be kind to is yourself. I mean, when you're not making sales goals, when you're losing deals, the person you beat up is yourself. And if you are not kind to yourself, you cannot be kind to others. You know, focus on far too often we judge ourselves on results rather than rewarding ourselves for action. It's just like I told you the other night when I was in the airport, I made a deal with myself. And my deal was if I made three sales calls and I wrote one blog, my reward was I could watch crap television. Now, um, I don't ever give myself the luxury of watching. That's not television. you. That is yeah. not you. But I, but if, but you know, left to my own devices, I could sit in my bed all day long, eat junk food, and just watch crap television. I could be very happy doing that. <laughs> but it's it's not my mo at all. So that was the deal. It was, but I rewarded the action that I took. See, that is so key because you do you you, you beat up on yourself. And you know what happens? I also find is that people begin beating up on everything else. Oh, if 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 this wasn't happening, if this wasn't happening, and they spend all their focus passing blame rather than looking for the solution. Dave Sanderson, another member of Mastermind, grace is fueled by gratitude. Gratitude eliminates fear. It is. This is why I I, I start off the day and I. What are five things that I'm thankful for? I, I'm going to encourage everybody to do that because again. If I don't start the day right, it's amazing how it can go south pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. I love um, I love what Dave Sanderson says here is that gratitude eliminates fear. Yeah. Really, really focus on, you know, on gratitude. Again, though, you know, what I'm going to say is progress. Mm -hmm. Give yourself 
you know, my husband and I were talking about this last night because he wants me to be perfect at tennis. And I am far. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Aren't you perfect already? No, 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 no. I only started playing tennis six years ago. And I was telling him, I said, you know, I'm playing 4-0 tennis right now. I said, that is a lot of progress. Am I perfect? No, but I've made a lot of progress. And confidence comes from focusing on the progress that you've made. Are you better? It can happen in business all the time. I mean, you're like, you think you should be at a certain level, but look at where you've come from. Be kind to yourself in that language for the progress that you've made. See, and that's where our mindset gets the worst of us because we do, we, we think we're much further along. No, we relax, but again, look at where you came from. And this, it, 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 it is so amazing. And I love the comments. I, I'm going to pop up, pop up here. Net. Let me get this. Com- well, you need I'm not, Natalie's? I'm not, yeah, there, there's, there's Natalie's comment. Friday is one of my busiest days. And I love it because Natalie, I bet you cruise into the weekend in a very positive state of mind. And this is, this is the way I do it. And again, it comes back to having that routine. Now, here's something else. You got to be very careful of who you're associating with. And because who you associate with very much impacts your attitude, very much impacts your confidence. Some of you out there listening, watching this are probably associating with people. And and I'm going to go back to Jim Rohn's line. Jim Rohn's line says you become the sum of the five people you associate with the most. Our mothers were right when she has to be careful of who to, who to play with at school, right? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. You've got to associate yourself with winners because a rising tide lifts all boats. You've got to get that negativity out of your mind. One final thing I'll, I'll share is this. At the end of the day, take a couple minutes and reflect on the day and reflect on what happened great. What was the great thing? What was the good thing? Go into your evening feeling positive about what it is that you did that day. It may be only something small, but dwell on the positive, not the negative. Yeah, such um, so so good. You know, years ago, my nephew went on a uh, a Knowles Leadership Outdoor um, trip, and when he came back, I said, "What are the biggest things that you learned?" And he gave me a couple of lessons, but I've never forget one. They were out on an iceberg. They were in in Chile and literally had to build igloos at night to um, to sleep in. And um, he said, "We were on this iceberg. It was freezing. We were wet. We a lot of." just unfortunate things that happened. And he said, there were two girls on the trip who were just complaining like crazy. And they had this one guide who, um, who was from India. And he said, he's the happiest guy in the world. And um, he said, I learned right there in that moment that I could be happy or I could be sad, but either way, I was still going to be stuck on this iceberg. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love that approach. And that's what we have to take because again, I can't impact. They couldn't get themselves off that iceberg. The, right. That was an environment they couldn't control. And so they had to, so this, and, and it all begins with your own mindset. Wow. Time is running past. We, we got, we got to get to, we got to get to the book. Right? Yeah. I want, I got to tell one story though, a bad yeah. story, a bad story on myself about attitude and something I've never uh, forgotten. When I was 14, I was playing golf with my mother and I was everything that a 14 year old girl could be. You might as well just put bad attitude across my forehead. And we were playing behind a bunch of really slow men. And um, and I was really ag- aggravated. I was very, very frustrated. I was aggravated, just whining, complaining about it hole after hole after hole. Um, my mother never said a word. 12th hole, I get up, we're on a par three and I can't tee off. And I'm like, look at these guys, mother, they are so slow, blah, blah, blah. My mother never looked at me. And she let me hit my ball. She got up and she teed off. And as she walked back to the cart, she said, I've just been trying to figure out at what point you thought that when you were having a bad day, you had the right to ruin everybody else's day along with it. Got in the cart, drove away. I have never forgotten that. Is that it's, um, you know, I mean, I unfortunately was not raised with, a, with parents who spanked me. That would have been easier rather than, than, than lectures like that. But attitude is, if you are around people and you have a bad attitude, you might as well put the sale in the trash can because people are not going to buy from you. They want people who believe that things are good and can find the positive in anything. That is a skill that can be built. 
customers, customers don't want to hear from negative Nelly. That is so spot on. And, and again, right. I mean, so Mary, yeah. Hey, we got to get to the book. You just held up the book. I'll hold up my copy. The Negativity Fast. Isn't this perfect how this book by Anthony? Just, just brand new. It's coming out um, Halloween on Halloween, correct? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, this is a book you got to read because again, your attitude going into the sale predetermines the results you get coming out of it. Now, I just picked up my copy yesterday, so I haven't had a chance to read it. Have you? Had I haven't either. I'm, I'm two chapters. I'm two chapters in, but I was really, um, I was really drawn to the fact that what I loved, what I love about this book that Anthony's written, is it is about taking control of your attitude, I love right? It. And you control it. You do. You, you, you absolutely control it because again. You can't control the outside environment. Okay, with that, hey, let's jump into the lightning round. Top 10 ways to improve confidence. Go. Number one, um, have a morning routine. Number two, have a routine throughout the day. You stole my number one. <laughs> <laughs> number um, three, uh, progress. Focus on, really focus on progress. Number four, surround yourself with positive people. Do not allow negative voices into your head. Yeah, improve your confidence by um, celebrating rewards, things that turn out right, places where you've tried, places where you made a change. Reward and recognize the differences that you're making. Keep a journal of those success stories and use that as fuel when you do get down. You go back through that journal and you say, wow, I did this, 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 and this. Yeah, I would say number seven, um, make a few commitments. Um, every day. Like my confidence really went up when I made my three sales calls and I wrote my blog. Like make a deal with yourself about actions that you're going to take and then do what you say you're going to do. And hey, if you're down, pick up the phone and call one of your favorite customers. Your favorite customer will pick you up because your favorite customer will say, hey, thanks for calling. I'm glad to hear from you. And it's amazing how the voice of a positive customer will lift you up. Yeah. Um, take action. Always take action. You know, when you're feeling down, when your confidence slips, get in motion. And I'll share one more and then we'll close it down. Hey, join Sales Logic Mastermind because why we're surrounding ourselves with positive people looking and achieving positive outcomes. So with that, I want to say thank you for listening to Sales Logic. If you like what you hear, subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast app. If something we've said has earned you a single dollar, consider telling a friend. Why? Because it's how we grow when we help you grow. I'm Mark Hunter. And I'm Meredith Elliott Powell. Remember, when you sell, when you sell with confidence and integrity, all of this uncertainty suddenly becomes your competitive advantage. And the sale becomes logical. All right. Thank you, Patrick Tinney. Number 11 is become an incrementalist. Oh, I love that. That, that. Patrick, spot on. Love it. Great. That's an awesome one. And Renell, we'll take a look at this book um, uh, for next week. But for those of you who have not checked out the Sales Logic Mastermind, go to saleslogicpodcast.com. You'll find information there. And we'll see you right back here next week, 8 a.m. Eastern, for another episode of Sales Logic.